can you solve this math challenge? Here's the question. Given this function f of f of x equals x plus 1 over x plus 2, then the goal is to find the value, the numerical value of f of 3. So pause this video right now and see if you can answer this question. Because I will show you the solution in 3, 2, 1. Alright, so this question is viral on Facebook and on X. And some people, maybe around 95% of them, answer f of 3 equals 1 over 4. So this corresponds to a function that is equivalent to f of x equals 1 over x plus 1. And this is partially correct. Why partially correct? Because there's another function that satisfies this f of f of x equals x plus 1 over x plus 2. And of course, if there's another function that satisfies this condition, so there's another value for f of 3. And now, on this video, I will show you the correct approach to answer this kind of question. So let's begin. Now, let's get our given. We have f of f of x equals x plus 1 over x plus 2. Now, the first question is, what is f of f of x? This is what we call decomposition of function. So a composition of function is created when one function is substituted into another function. Now, we have an example here. So given f of x equals 3x plus 2 and g of x equals x plus 5. Now, for example, we want to find f of g of x. So this is equivalent to f of x plus 5, which is the value of g of x. So we need to replace all x to the f of x with x plus 5. So this becomes 3 multiplied by x plus 5 plus 2. Simplifying this, we arrive at the answer 3x plus 17. Also, we can get g of f of x. So this is equivalent to g of the value of f of x, which is 3x plus 2. So simplifying this, we have 3x plus 7. And this is the composition a function. So now, in our given condition, f of x here is not a simple linear function. It is not also a quadratic function. So f of x is technically a rational function. So we can say that the general form of f of x is equivalent to ax plus b all over cx plus d. So the goal now is to find a, b, c, and d. And if we get the value of a, b, c, and d, then we're done. So let's do that. First, let's apply f of f of x. Now, our f of x is ax plus b all over cx plus d. So this becomes all x can replace with ax plus b all over cx plus d. And do the same thing on the denominator. Now, simplify the left-hand side of our equation by multiplying the numerator and denominator by cx plus d. So, to eliminate the denominator. And now, what we're going to do is to focus on this result. Now, let's combine the terms with the variable x on the numerator and the denominator. And from here, we can compare the left-hand side to the right-hand side. So, we have a squared plus bx, this is the coefficient of x, and this is equivalent to the coefficient of x on the right-hand side, which is equal to 1. And now, ab plus bd is equivalent to 1. ac plus cd, this is equivalent to 1, the coefficient of x on the denominator, and bc plus d squared is equivalent to 2. Now, we have four equations with four unknowns, and we will use those four equations to find the values of a, b, c, and d. And to begin with, let's use the second and the third equations. Now, for the second one, we can factor out c. So we have c multiplied by a plus d equals 1. To the third equation, we can factor out b, and we have b multiplied by a plus d equals 1. Now, from here, using this, since they are both equal to 1, we can equate them and equate this to 0 like this. Because we see a common factor of a plus d, we can factor out the common factor a plus d. So we have c minus b multiplied by a plus d equals 0. 
Now, using the zero property, we can say that C minus B equals zero or A plus D equals zero. From the first case, we have C equals B. and the second case, we have A equals negative D. Therefore, we have two possible cases here. The first case is when C equals B and the second case when A equals negative D. But we will focus on the second case because I will show you that the second case is not possible. And to do that, let's have the first and the fourth equation. And what we're going to do is to subtract these two equations. And if we do that, we have a squared minus d squared equals negative 1. Now from here, we know a equals negative d. And if we square on both sides, we get something like a squared equals d squared because negative d squared is the same thing as d squared. All right? Negative 1 raised to the power of 2 is positive 1. Now equate this to 0 or subtract d squared on both sides, we have a squared minus d squared equals 0. Now the first one, a squared minus d squared equals negative 1. And the second equation, a squared minus d squared now, is 0. Therefore, this case is not possible. So we cannot have any values for a, b, c, and d using this case. So we can now proceed to case number one. All right. Using case number one where c equals to b, let's use the first and the fourth equation again. And then from here, since c equals b, our first equation becomes b squared plus d squared equals 2. And the second equation becomes a squared plus b squared equals 1. Now, from here, let's subtract the second equation to the first equation. This will give us d squared minus a squared equals 1. d squared minus a squared is a difference of two squares, so we can factor this out as d minus a multiplied by d plus a equals 1. Now, recall on the third equation, we can rewrite this as b multiplied by a plus d equals 1 because we see a common factor of a plus d. Now, comparing these two equations, notice 1 is equivalent to 1. d plus a is the same thing as a plus d. So we can say that b is equivalent to d minus a. All right, so from here, we now know that c equals b and b equals d minus a. So from here, we can now use either of these two equations to solve for any values of d and a and we will use the second one because this is just equivalent to just one now let's replace this b with its value d minus a expanding d minus a raised to the power of 2 we have d squared minus 2 a d plus a squared now this d squared we can use this equation to solve for the value of d squared in terms of a squared and d squared is just a squared plus one so we can replace this d squared with d squared plus 1 like this. Now, subtract 1 on both sides, so this 1 becomes 0. And we can add this 3a squared, so this will give us 3a squared minus 2ad equals 0. Now we can factor out a, and we have a multiplied by 3a minus 2d equals 0. And focusing on this result, since it is equal to 0, applying the 0 property, we can say that a equals 0 or 3a minus 2d equals 0. So we got the value of a as 0 or a is equivalent to 2d over 3. And from here, we now have case 1.1 and case 1.2. Case 1.1 is when a equals 0 and case 1.2 is when a is equivalent to 2d over 3. So let's start with case 1.1 when a equals 0. So let's use this equation. d squared equals a squared plus 1. Since a equals 0, a squared equals 0. So d squared equals 1. Solve for the value of d, d equivalent to positive or negative 1. Since d equals positive or negative 1, and b equals d minus a and a equals 0. So b is also positive or negative 1. 
And since C equals to B, so C is also positive or negative 1. So for the case 1.1, A equals 0, B equals positive or negative 1, C equals positive or negative 1, D equals positive or negative 1. So from here, we can get a function as f of x equals 1 over x plus 1. And this is our first function that satisfies this condition. So if we get f of f of x, this is equivalent to x plus 1 all over x plus 2. All right, now how about case 1.2, wherein a is equivalent to 2d over 3. So let's get our equation again. d squared equals a squared plus 1. Now a is 2d over 3. Now square 2d over 3, this will give us 4d squared over 9. Multiply 9 to all of this term, this will give us 9d squared equals 4d squared plus 9. Then subtract 4d squared on both sides. So we have 5d squared equals 9. Now let's focus on this result. Let's solve for the value of d. So divide both sides by 5, then get the square root on both sides. And we get that the value of d is equivalent to positive or negative 3 over square root of 5. And now, we have the value for d, positive or negative 3 over square root of 5. And we can now get the value of a because a is equivalent to 2 times d all over 3. So if d is positive or negative 3 over square root of 5, a is equivalent to positive or negative 2 over square root of 5. Now, b is equivalent to d minus a. So, positive or negative 3 over square root of 5 minus positive or negative 2 over square root of 5. b is equivalent to 1 over positive or negative 1 over square root of 5. And since b is equivalent to c, so b is equivalent to c, and they are both equal to positive or negative 1 over root 5. And using those values of a, b, c, and d, we get a function that is equivalent to f of x equals 2x plus 1 all over x plus 3. And that is our second function that satisfies this condition. Alright, so before we begin to find the value of f of 3, let's check first if those function really satisfies this condition. So let's have the first one, f of x equals 1 over x plus 1. So f of f of x is equivalent to 1 over 1 over x plus 1 plus 1. So to eliminate this denominator, what we're going to do is to multiply the numerator and denominator by x plus 1, like this. Now, simplify the denominator. 1 plus x plus 1 is the same thing as x plus 2. And that's it. Alright, how about the second function. We have f of x equals 2x plus 1 all over x plus 3. So doing f of f of x, we have 2 multiplied by 2x plus 1 over x plus 3 plus 1 all over 2x plus 1 over x plus 3 plus 3. So to simplify this, multiply the numerator and the denominator by x plus 3. Now simplify. This will give us 5x plus 5 on the numerator and 5x plus 10 on the denominator. Now, if we divide the numerator and the denominator by 5, this will give us x plus 1 over x plus 2 also. Therefore, we found two functions that satisfies this condition. We have f of x equals 1 over x plus 1, and f of x equals 2x plus 1 over x plus 3. So we also have two possible values for f of 3. The first one, if we have f of x equals 1 over x plus 1, f of 3 is equivalent to 1 over 4, for sure. And on the second function, if we replace all x with 3, we get f of 3 equals 7 over 6. And that is our answer to this question. Therefore, Given f of, f of x equals x plus 1 over x plus 2, then the value of f of 3 is equivalent to 1 over 4 or 7 over 6. And as always, we are.
Done.